Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Operation Thunderbolt on the Amstrad GX4000 console, released by Ocean Software in 1990, but the original version for the normal range of Amstrad CPC computers was actually released a year earlier in 1989, around about December in time for Christmas. Uh, but we're not sure on the specific release date for the console and cart version, but we believe it arrived very shortly after the console's release as one of the very first games available in the latter part of 1990. So this is an arcade conversion with a coin-op from Taito appearing in 1988, which is, which is of course the sequel to the highly successful Operation Wolf. And as you can see from the cabinet, it now has two mounted Uzis for simultaneous two-player action. So we're going to take a quick look at the arcade original first for comparison before moving on to the GX4000 version. However, quick bit of history. Because uh, what I find particularly interesting is that this game is actually inspired by a real life and military operation actually called Operation Thunderbolt, which, according to the ever reliable Wikipedia, was a successful counter terrorist hostage rescue mission carried out by commandos of the Israel Defense Forces, the IDF, at the Entebbe Airport in Uganda on the 4th of July 1976. So the story goes, an Air France uh, plane with nearly 250 passengers was hijacked by terrorists, landing the plane in uh, Entebbe, Uganda and demanding the release of over 50 Palestinian prisoners. Strangely, or rather not given his mental state, Idi Amin, the dictator of Uganda, actually welcomed the terrorists. And if you dig further into this story, this is where the King of Scotland title he gave himself originated from. Anyway, the uh, Israeli Defence Forces, the IDF, staged a daring raid that's become the stuff of legends and studied closely by military forces all over the world. And also immortalised in at least five movies, including The Last King of Scotland, and inspiring several more including Delta Force with Chuck effing Norris. Uh, now in the raid they managed to rescue all the hostages except for four. All the hijackers plus 45 Ugandan soldiers were killed and 11 Soviet built MiG-17s and MiG-21s of Uganda's Air Force were also destroyed. So there you go, a little bit of history there for you. And we're now going to jump onto the arcade version first before we get to the GX4001 just so we can compare the two. Carrying the people, <laughs> nice English and grammar there. Um, but as you can see, the story on the attract sequence mirrors the real life operation from the bolt raid very closely. Terrorists take over an airplane, land it in Africa, take the hostages and demand prisoners be released, and it's up to us to go and uh, rescue them. Actually, it's Roy Roy Adams returning from Operation Wolf with a fellow. Hardy Jones. Operation nice music and, and uh, sample speech there, I like that. But yes, you can have simultaneous two player action with the two mounted Uzis on the cabinet there. Um, and I'm going to just uh, show you a little bit of uh, each level here, just so you can see and compare to the Amstrad version. Let's see what's there, what's missing, and what's been done etc and as you can see here it's already differing from Operation Wolf by having a into the screen sort of scrolling section with some nice sprite scaling uh, at the side of the road there although the road doesn't scroll very nicely itself however graphics are pretty nice it does move to the traditional side scrolling target shooting of Operation Wolf on level 2 here this, this will look very familiar to Operation Wolf fans And then we're in a jeep on level three. And now we've got helicopters and tanks and I don't know, they're MIGs maybe. They look a bit like F-14s, but I think they're supposed to be MIGs. We've got hostages to rescue on level three by shooting the doors open. Unfortunately, there are animals to shoot, which will drop you uh, power-ups. Uh, we're on a boat on uh, level four. Is that level 5? Actually, more hostages to rescue on the next level. I think this is level 6. I've lost track <laughs> already. Inside the enemy bunker, I think. 
Level 7, we're on the uh, runway trying to catch up to the uh, plane full of the hostages. And then the final level is we're actually inside the plane with uh, all the terrorists throwing grenades inside the plane. But, uh, watch out for the uh, women and children there escaping. And then the final section is a showdown with the, the chief terrorist who's taken the pilot uh, hostage. You've got to be very careful not to shoot the pilot, otherwise you absolutely fail the mission, no continues. In fact, if you die here, even if you've got credits in, you won't be allowed to continue any further. And there you go, that's the game done. So that's the arcade version, coin up -op, of Operation Thunderbolt. Including the uh, ending sequence there. But it's time now, guys, to move on to the Amstrad GX4000 version from Ocean Software. And uh, this was basically uh, uh, one of the very, very first uh, kart games for the console. The ill-fated and failure of a console, sadly. And here we are on the title screen with some very nice music. And a slightly different title screen to the uh, CPC original. Now, at the end of the video, we will do like a little comparison between the Amstrad CPC and Amstrad GX4000 versions of the game. So look out for that at the end of the video and you'll see that there's actually some big significant differences in the graphics that a lot of people don't realise has been done on this version. But here we're just seeing a rolling demo which we don't get in the uh, CPC version but you may have spotted that we don't get the nice loading screen that the tape disc version had. However the title screen has been nicely redesigned and with the same nice tune on the title screen though. Really nice little ditty albeit quite a short one. But um, yeah, this is um, this was just kind of a strange release, really. Uh, it was barely advertised at the time for the GX, and not reviewed in any magazines. And we'll come on to that later. Anyway, nice little jingle of music there, and our briefing there. Gather intelligence information, and off we go. Get the Uzi there. Shoot the Uzi straight away if you can, and you'll get a red laser dot there. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very hard to see where you're shooting. There's a bulletproof vest that's just dropped down there. There's an animal, and there's a med kit. Um, <laughs> ammo magazine dropping down. A grenade. But yes, lots, to, lots to talk about there. <laughs> lots of things, just little things, just happening there. So, okay, we've got helicopters and we've got um, like terrorists and so soldiers. And um, guys, uh, I would basically ignore the helicopters at the top of the screen and just concentrate on the uh, soldiers. But only soldiers on the left half of the screen. Ooh, energy's getting quite low there. Thankfully, we've got an energy pickup. Um, the reason being is draw a, a, a vertical line down the centre of the screen because we're playing one player here and player one only takes damage on his side of the screen on the left. So we're concentrating on the baddies on the left of the screen. I have seen, my, I have seen myself lose damage from something happening on the right hand side but it's n not as frequent and not as obvious and... Um, so yeah, anyway, this is how I got through the game and, and I'm going to get through this on one credit. So I'm not going to die. That's my goal. And this is uh, this is going to be very tough to do. I think from like level 3 or 4 onwards. But the difficulty just goes quite insane. And you need quite a bit of luck in terms of the drops. Now, for example, if your life and energy just get low, the game should spawn like a health bottle or an animal sadly to shoot there and that will spawn a crate on a parachute which will have a med kit inside there you go um, try not to waste too much ammunition because later on if you're trying to do this on one credit you're going to be very very low on ammo and on these earlier levels I try to tend to try and get as many of those ammo drops and grenades as possible and try and stockpile them a little because you don't really get any bonus ones at any point. And by the way, um, like I mean at the end of the level, and by the way, you don't get your health restored at an end of the level either, unlike Operation Wolf, which restores some of your energy. So quite a tough game. Okay, so um, I'm not a fan of the colour cycling effects on the road there. It's quite a cheap 
cop out way of getting a scrolling road. Um, the buildings at the side of the road, just big giant rectangles that pop in and out. It's not proper sprite scaling. They're just tiles that appear and disappear along with those telegraph poles and stuff like that. It's fooling no one. Neither is the colour cycling on the road uh, to try and uh, <laughs> pretend to be some kind of scroll get on the go there. But thankfully, anyway, Mission 2 goes back to the Operation Wolf style of a scrolling from left to right. And it's actually quite a, a nice smooth scroll there. In fact, the game plays at a very steady uh, and decent frame rate. I've not noticed any kind of like slowdown. It really just chuck a lot of sprites at you. Look at all those rockets there. We've got plenty of... Um, uh, enemy soldiers on the screen there with grenades flying and explosions and stuff like that. It does actually look quite impressive. And again, no slowdown. So there, there is actually some decent programming going on here. So let's talk about the people behind the game quickly. Um, coding was done by Andrew Deakin, who also coded Operation Wolf, as you'd expect. You'll also know him for Rambo Free, Renegade Free, oh dear, uh, Robocop 2, yay, uh, The Addams Family and Total Recall, all for Ocean. So quite a good run of games there. Um, actually, I mean, Renegade Free would, was actually quite decently programmed. It, it was just poorly designed. Anyway, uh, graphics by Ivan Horn. He worked on all the same games as Andrew, so they kind of worked together quite a lot. Uh, but he also did graphic work on Cap Combat School, Arkanoid Revenge of Do, uh, Megabox for another company, and Total Recall. Uh, music by the excellent uh, Matthew Cannon, uh, known for his Batman the Movie music. Uh, also see uh, Burning Rubber on the uh, GX4000, along with Navy Seals, Robocop 2 on the GX as well. And then also Adidas Championship Football. So there you go. A good, uh, solid team from Ocean behind the game. But I do feel like uh, this is perhaps a little bit rushed. Probably rushed in time to meet Ocean's um, Christmas deadline. Because they wanted this out for Christmas on the Amstrad CPC. And so there's, there's very little improvements they were going to do on the GX4000 release. But these graphics make a heck of a lot of a difference, as you'll see in the comparison at the end of the video. The, uh, the original Amstrad CPC graphics were, in my opinion, way too garish. And this is so much more pleasant on the eyes, and it actually makes it better to play because you can actually make out things a lot easier. And uh, yeah, just check out the comparison, the side-by-side -side comparison at the end of this video. But generally my problem with this game is kind of what we'll see on this level coming up, the Jeep level. Um, my problem really is is that it, it the Operation Thunderbolt is non-stop with like chucking everything at you. Uh, the enemies are relentless and unlike Operation Wolf where you had to kill a certain amount of enemies here you just slog it out as a survival mission to hopefully scrape through to the end of the level whilst the game you know just chucks a never-ending wave of enemies after you. Operation Wolf had balance and space with breathing room between attacks not only did it make you think and plan where you were going to sort of target, um, so I save my grenades or ammo or just concentrate on the boats or the uh, tanks or whatever. Um, but it also made you think and uh, plan what you're going to target, but also added some extra tension and atmosphere to the game. Here, you just may as well just hold down that fire button and forget, fire and forget, literally. Another game on the GX there, <laughs> referencing. Uh, with you just concentrating and looking for the next health and ammo drop, it just never ends. Operation Thunderbolt, to me, is like the equivalent of an uh, of an excessively widdly widdly guitar solo. Now, stick with me on this. Now, <laughs> imagine some guitarist like assaulting you at a gig with for like an hour. Seemingly impressive at first, with a mad flurry of whittle, 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 but boring very, very quickly. Um, it's always been said that you can say a lot more in a great guitar solo uh, with less notes. 
is the space in between the notes that creates and constructs a great solo. In the same way, Operation Thunderbolt has no space or breathing room or subtlety. It's just an, a constant assault on the senses and that's not necessarily a good thing. I hope you got my um, metaphor there really. But yeah, look at this. It's just, I have not released a fire button once here really. You're just like, oh, where where am I targeting next? It's just, oh, non-stop, especially this level. Um, I think maybe the next level is a little better because we're going to have some hostages to rescue and you're going to have to have some fort into it. But there's literally no fort here whatsoever. Um, it's just concentrate on destroying everything on the left-hand side of the screen. Look, get the ammo, stockpile that up. Shoot the poor little fox there so he drops the crate with the health kit. I don't like shooting animals in games. I don't condone it. I'm not a wuss about it, I just rather it they did something different. Maybe have a little guy in a motorcycle crossing the road or something like that you had to shoot to get the uh, pick up. I don't know, anyway. But there we go. Um, <laughs> God, you're just exhausted by the end of every level. And that was nuts. Um, look at my life there, very, very low. And a hit rate of only 25%. Are you supposed to get a hit rate of 100% as one player? Or any... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, actually, we did get a little bit of life back there, actually, I think. Anyway. Oh, yeah, okay. Shoot the doors to release the hostages. This is really, really tough level. Um, concentrate on primarily on the guys on the rooftop, the rocket launchers, because they can fire off loads of rockets and really drain your health. I'll pick up. There's the um, body armor. Again, I don't know if it actually does anything. It's but the, I think it says in the manual that it's supposed to reduce the damage you take. Um, doesn't seem to sort of expand on that any further. That's what I assume happens. But it only drops once per level. If you miss it, it's gone. So get it as soon as you see it. And I hope it actually does something useful. And obviously you want to get the red dot from the um, Uzi that drops from the screen so you can actually see where he actually shooting. Most people's complaint about this game actually is that you can't see where you're shooting until you fire your gun unless you pick up the Uzi and get the red dot. And a lot of people struggle to even hit that when it drops. Initially anyway. So the initial impressions of this game probably aren't that good. It's a very frustrating experience and maybe off-putting. So it's not really a great game to really sell the console when it was first released as one of the first Basher games, to be honest. I don't think it's that bad, um, and I quite like the Amstrad CPC original, but hey, if you, if you were coming after playing on the uh, NES and Master System and you heard about the Mega Drive coming out and saw screenshots and demos of that and the games that were on that, you would not be that impressed with this at all. And bear in mind as well, guys, uh, when this was released, you would have paid, wait for it, £24.99p in 1990 for this. Uh, God knows what that would be in today's money, uh, adjusted for inflation, but that's, that's quite a chunk of dough. A lot for kids to spend with a little bit of pocket money. A uh, little boss battle there at the end there. <laughs> And bear in mind as well, of course, that the Tape Disc original released uh, a year earlier for about £9.99 on tape and I think about £14 on disc maybe. So it's a £10 to £15 increase in price for the privilege of having a cartridge and a nice box. And the boxes for the GX4000 games were nice. And instant loading and a graphical overhaul. Is it really worth it? The answer is probably not. But there is a mis misconception that this game was already out on budget for free quid, as I've seen um, talked about on the internet in various places. Um, however, that isn't true. The first adverts for Operation Thunderbolt on the Hit Squad budget label I found started around October of 1991, so long after the GX4000 version was released, uh, probably over a year. So. Um, that is not true, although it didn't take long for the budget one to come out for like £2.99 on cassette. It was about a year later. Just to add insult to injury. 
But um, again, when, if you bought the console at the time, there was a real struggle to find software in the shops anyway. And a lot of the big console releases didn't really happen until about like May, June of the next year, 1991. And the console had been out for months. So you may have only just come across Operation Thunderbolt round about then and found only a few months later you can buy it for 2 99 on tape. <laughs> not good, not good. Okay, um, as we progress here, I think I'm going to talk about the other versions of the game quickly. Um, I think um, we've talked about the, the original Amstrad CPC version. I mean, it's identical apart from the overhauled improved graphics and the colours, including the new heads-up display at the bottom there, which looks nice. Loading screen is missing and the title screen is completely redesigned with a nice looking logo and the removal of the keyboard options. So if you're playing this on, a, on an Amstrad Plus machine, you would have to use the, joy, uh, the GX4000 paddle or a joystick. But yes, the GX4000 version is an improvement. Now the ZX Spectrum. Uh, similar given it was the same team behind it so probably shares a lot of the same code uh, but monochrome graphics and scaling at the side of the road on the first level is slower one thing that this does has does have sorry is the static cutscenes between the levels that the arcade version also has although um, it has some terrible scrolling effects on the on the last level which rather spoils things somewhat the Commodore 64 version uh, has different types of screen music and it's very, very good actually. Um, however, the game itself is disappointing. Apparently the, apparently the original coder had a nice looking demo, but no actual game finished um, for the deadline. So Ocean had to pull in their usual Commodore 64 team, I think Johnny Megan was on it and stuff, uh, to rescue the project and bring this in in under three weeks for the uh, Christmas deadline. And it shows it's the weakest of the 8-bit versions. Before I talk about the others quickly, um, here guys, concentrate on the guys coming down from the ceiling in the, to the uh, left of the uh, center and keep your targeting crosshair just above the heads of the bottom guys because all you need to do is shoot their grenades and don't actually fire any uh, uh, guns at you. But the guys from the ceiling do. So get rid of the guys from the ceiling first. Let the ho get the hostages released. Let them go. Because I'm trying not to kill any hostages here. I think they do actually drain your energy if you accidentally kill a hostage. So that's even more worse. But I'm trying to do this as a long play. Completing it as it should be completed. So there's my tip for you there. Look at that. I'm just concentrating on the grenades and the guys from the ceiling. Hoping I get a health drop soon. Health is very, very low. There it is. Okay, uh, so we move on to the 16-bit versions now. Tori ST has different music again. Has the intro a, a track sequence from the arcade version. Um, it's actually very faithful to the coin op, uh, even with the cutscenes and sample speech. However, the scrolling and scaling on the into the screen scrolling sections is naff, like the Amstrad version. Although weirdly, it improves on the Jeep level. Now, the Amiga version has better music than the ST, uh, but as expected, it's an ST port, and the Amiga can do so much better. Now, for both computers, it's not really up to standard for a 16-bit game, but a pass recreation of the coin op. Now, believe it or not guys, it was one of a system operation Thunderbolt arrived on and I'm surprised to find it made it to the SNES, the Super Nintendo. And, it, and furthermore surprised, it's not been renamed to Super Operation Thunderbolt. It's just called Operation Thunderbolt. And apparently it's compatible with the Super Scope, the ridiculous light gun that you could buy for the uh, SNES. And has a new longer intro and ending sequence. Oh, here's a boss battle here. You can see what I'm doing there. I remember just like, only go for his rockets when he's firing them on the left side of the screen. Oh, come on, ammo is really, really low though. Uh, um, as the, uh, current, continue on about the, the uh, SNES version. Uh, Roy Adams is no longer in the game though, but you can choose from six different characters to play as. I've no idea if that makes any difference to the game or not. It doesn't look like it. You can also choose your route on a map, but it's pointless because you say play the same levels as we're playing here and on the arcade. Uh, I guess it's just in an effort to justify its price tag and release on the snares because otherwise there's not much uh, 
added to the original game. It's just basically the same game. Um, surprisingly, uh, the scrolling and sprite scaling, uh, scaling, sorry, isn't great either. Oh dear, I would have thought the SNES would have knocked it out of the park, but no. Could have used mode 7 maybe, who knows. But it is the best of the 16-bit versions. And I think overall, guys, as well, I, I would have to say that the GX4000 version is, is the best of the 8-bit versions. Uh, definitely surpassing the Amstrad CPC original and the uh, Specky and Commodore 64 versions, but really not by much. They're, they're not classics, uh, but it's actually a fairly decent arcade conversion. I mean, the magazines at the time kind of liked it. Um, we always look for the um, Amstrad Action Review and talk about it before my long play and reviews. And the original CPC version was reviewed in the January 1990 issue 52 of Amstrad Action, and they lavished it with praise, even going as far to say that this is better than the coin hop. And it's not, it really isn't. The coin hop is the one to go for, uh, the, the original and the best. But they also talk about a variable credit system. That continues, apparently. And apparently, if you're doing poorly in the game, then it adjusts to give you more credits compared to do uh, compared to if you're doing well. Uh, there's no mention of this in the manual, and I've honestly not tested this to see if it's true or not. Uh, I don't actually think so, but but anyway, let's just move on from that. Uh, they gave the graphics 91%, Sonic's 63%, Grab Factor. 95% and staying power 64% with an overall AA rating of 89%. Wow. Now, some interesting stuff though I found from digging through Amstrad Action magazines. The GX4000 version was previewed briefly just in text in uh, issue 60 of uh, 1990. And interestingly, uh, apparently, this was planned originally to be a light gun game uh, for the GX4000. And I quote, it's hoped that a light gun will be available for the game's launch. Wow. There we go. So guys, there you go. Bit of a bombshell for you. This was going to be a light gun game for the uh, GX4000, but the gun never made it. In fact, the uh, Trojan light phaser... Um, took absolutely ages to come out. So, <laughs> um, it was like ages past the like the lifespan of the uh, GX4000, I'm pretty sure. Um, but they never officially reviewed um, the GX4000 version of Operation Thunderbolt Abstract Action. And actually a large number of cart games never got reviewed. Uh, mostly ones that were re-releases of tape disc originals like Batman and Barbarian 2. Oh, here we are on the final level. And I'm just trying to avoid shooting the children here. So just concentrate on the drops and the grenades being thrown at you from the left. But you do take a little bit of damage from the gra grenades landing on the right here. So bear that in mind. Um... But anyway, I kind of suspect that the cart releases from the tape disc versions that were quick conversions were shoved out very quickly after the console's launch, so there will be some games available and review copies weren't sent out. And I think that's the case here with Operation Thunderbolt, that they they uh, saw that like there was a problem getting games out, uh, there was problems at the factory getting them made and distributed as well. Um, they thought, probably looked at the in production light gun and thought this is this is going to take ages to come out let's just shove these out quick now and that's what's happened with uh, Operation Thunderbolt on the GX4000. Um, Abstract Action uh, the bud also reviewed the budget cassette re-release on the Hit Squad label and gave it a whopping 91% in January 1992 issue 76. And finally, in May 1992, issue 80, they did a cartridge roundup section where it got a much lower 70% being criticised for being lifted from a tape disc original and they, that they expected something better on cart. Well, we did get, in the, did get that in the graphics. And rather ironically, they use an incorrect screenshot in that roundup and use the CPC version. Anyway, here we are at the final boss. So watch what I'm doing here. You have to be very careful not to hit the pilot, and that would hit him there. And it takes a bit of practice and getting used to. This guy takes a lot of hits and damage to kill him. Wow, he must, I don't know what he's made of. He survived, he survived all those headshots, but we've done it. And there we go. The escape was successful. <laughs> and do we get any kind of ending? 
No, we'll just get a score tally going on. We don't even get an ending picture in the specy version. At least that got us on sort of a static screen. Ugh, they, didn't, they couldn't even add an ending in on the GX4000 re-release. Shame on you, Ocean. But you were probably up against the wall under pressure from time constraints and Amstrad demanding that games got put out quickly because no one had any bloody games to buy when the console was released. No one wanted to be stuck with burning, sodding rubber for the rest of their lives. So there we go. What score would I give this game? Um, this is a tough one. In a way, it's kind of a quality production. There's a quality team of programmers, coders, graphics artists, and musicians behind it. But it feels like it needed more time put on it. And I think shortcuts were taken. <sighs> and it's a very frustratingly hard game. But I managed to do it on one credit, but only just. But if you were wanted to use maybe the two extra credits you had here to get through the game, it perhaps wouldn't take you too long to beat. But <sighs> better than the CPC version. And I think I would give the CPC version like a 7.5 out of 10. And I think I'd give the GX4000 version a 8 out of 10. Just, just, just. <laughs> Take it all things into consideration. A lot of people hate this one. A lot of people really like this game as well. Um, so I'm going somewhere in the middle uh, uh, on balance and fairness. So there we go, guys. That was Operation Thunderbolt. And now we're going to take a look and compare the Amstrad CPC and GX4000 versions. So here's the original Amstrad CPC version. Yikes! Garish colours. And there's the nice subtle graphics of the Am GX4000. Back to the CPC. Back to the GX again, and you can see the difference. It's, it's miles better. Some people actually prefer these graphics because they're really bright, bold, and colourful. But I'll let you guys decide in the comments which you prefer better, as we can see them here side by side. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you very, very much for watching, guys, and goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that, if you did please click a like below, leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already, and over that way there's another video for you to check out, Zypho out.